Yes, so we have been looking at uh, why and how uh, the U.S. firms have accumulated uh, so much internal funds, uh, mainly in the form of cash and financial assets, to the point that they have so much internal resources that they actually become net lenders. They're lending to the rest of the economy in the last uh, 10 years. This is in contrast with some 20 or 30 years ago where they were actually borrowing from the rest of the economy an equivalent of one-fourth of their total uh, tangible in investment. So we would like to understand exactly how this that came to be, how each of the firms actually achieved that large position on their own balance sheet with a lot of uh, liquidity at, at halt. Uh, Some people, some people have claimed that this comes at the cost of investment and feel uncomfortable with this idea of, say, a manufacturing firm in the business of lending money uh, instead of actually putting the money into a factory, putting the money into offices. And so we would like to understand if is it true, if this is reflecting some underlying uh, frictions, changing frictions that are actually constraining investment and therefore coming at a cost to, to the uh, economy. Do you have any idea what caused it? Uh, so our view is that uh, the reason why firms accumulate uh, internal funds is mainly to self-insure, to be able to have these internal funds at hand and do not depend on debt, external uh, banks, external debtors, or the baggers of the financial markets regarding equity. So be able to finance the projects themselves without no strings attached, essentially, and without uh, any kind of uh, fiscal or regulation uh, penalty uh, to do that. Now, what the shift coming from the 70s, we are blaming it into uh, taxation. In particular, in the 70s, the fiscal pressure on shareholders' distributions like dividends or capital gains, share buybacks, was much higher. So overall equity was substantially costlier for firms to issue and then in the 2000s. So a series of regulations, tax code reforms actually made it cheaper to issue equity. And as a matter of fact, that actually make it easier for firms to accumulate those internal funds and be able to rely on, on them. And as a matter of fact, the fact that they have these internal funds, is, it is an indication that they've been able to bring the cost of capital uh, down. And therefore that has turned out with higher investment rather than lower investment, uh, as some people suspected. You think this is a positive or a negative thing? I think overall this looks like a positive uh, development. Um, there are some dangers to this. There is a sense in it is a larger shift on financial positions. And we know not all institutions in a given economy are always ready to handle these large uh, shifts. And, we, as economists as well, we need to be changing our mindset regarding where the liquidity in one economy goes. It's no longer sitting just in banks or no longer just sitting in some people's savings account. It's also sitting on firms whose decision process is substantially different. There are dangers, but it's not, there is no reason, uh, even abstracting from my work, I don't see any immediate reason of why this will be a, a, a problem right, right away. Seems like everybody agrees that financial markets are not perfect. And the obvious way of avoiding these imperfections is avoiding financial markets altogether. And a firm can just do this if it has its own resources. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what households do. If maybe they want really, they're very worried about mortgages, you could say, well, you could save your money. It will be very difficult, but if we get there, it wouldn't be a problem uh, per se.